Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 25 March 2021. Thursday night, 9 o'clock. Time for a knife sale on the Apostle P channel. And we've got a good one for you guys tonight. The selection of cutlery will be many and varied. No fixed blades tonight. But we have a good little smattering of everything that folds and cuts. Some that even shoot out the front. <clears throat> Before we get into the meat of the sale, a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, if you're new to this weekly sales event, I need you to be familiar with and agreeable to the terms of the sale. I'm going to post them up on the screen for you in just a few moments for your perusal. I will also reprint them in the description of this video. To go along with that, I'm going to post three links in the description right above the terms of the sale. The first of those links is to my Primer for Buyers video. That is a 38 minute long expanded explanation of the whys and wherefores of the sale and the terms as they are. <clears throat> so please be familiar with that if you're new. The second link will be to my FAQs for Consigners video. If you're interested in moving some of your collection along using this weekly sales event, that video will explain how it works from the seller's perspective. And then the third link, as always, is to my Rates and Services video for the Apostle P Knife Service, the original precision sharpening service for the online knife community. So you're going to see those three links right at the top of the description, then the terms of the sale. Below all that, you'll see the list of tonight's inventory complete with timestamps and pricing. Regarding pricing, the number to the left of the slash is your as shown price with the edge the knife comes with. The number to the right will be your as sharpened price by the Apostle P Knife Service. And there will be next day sharpening available for the first six knives purchased to be sharpened this evening. So those will ship tomorrow the 26th along with all the as shown inventory that sells. If you want your knife sharpened and you're outside those first six tonight, Expect your knife to ship in about three weeks after sharpening. I believe that's about it for housekeeping. Time to get you the terms of the sale up on the screen, and then we'll be right back with the sale inventory for tonight. Here are the terms. All right, let's get to it, shall we? First up, just one leftover from last week's sale. We're going to kick off the traditional slip joint pocket knife category of this evening's sale with this one. It's going to come in an unassuming plain white box. Not the original box for this knife. This is from the now extinct in its original form Shat and Morgan Cutlery. Produced by Queen Cutlery for many, many, many years in their old plant. The old Shat and Morgan plant in Titusville, PA. This is the Shat and Morgan Cigar Muskrat. So a rather large cigar frame, 4 and 1 16th inches in closed length. Sporting the Keystone Shield. Sort of an amber jigged bone. Very cool coloration on the pile side by the way smooth nickel silver bolsters brass liners and it is an opposite end equal end jack with dual muskrat blades on cam tangs polished finish now these blades do congress in the frame let me wipe these off so you can see this well so when I say they congress, that means there's no 
center liner in the blade well so the blades sort of meet in the middle because of that there is a little bit of rubbing going on as you'll normally see and here's the other one let me show you that's right it's right up near the front <clears throat> Blades are 1095, pull weight, seven and a half, let's say. These are on cam tanks, nice walk and talk, and a little bit of side play as you'll normally see with a queen produced knife of the era. So let's see. Guys, these will never be made like this in that facility again. I believe the Shatton Morgan brand has been purchased, but they're not going to be like this. Uh, we ran this knife last week at $85. It did not sell on Thursday night. We dropped it to $70. This week, somebody gets a piece of history for $60. 6 0 The 90 if you'd like my edge on both blades. That is the Shatton Morgan Cigar Muskrat. Next up, onto the fresh stuff, we're going to start you off with a what? A Carhartt knife? Well, not really. It is for Carhartt by Case. And what we have is the Case Carhartt TB101546 SS back pocket. The TB in front of that model number indicates designed by the old dog, Tony Bowes. <clears throat> so we have four and five eighths inches of closed length satin finished nickel silver bolsters, brown G10 with some pretty doggone nice texturing, a brass shield, and brass liners. Inside that handle comes a muskrat clip with a gorgeous swedge. Basically full flat ground. True sharp stainless steel. And I think this knife had a chip in the edge. And its consigner had me sharpen it. So it's already got an apostle P edge on it. Pull is, uh, I don't know, 7-ish. Nice walk and talk. Centering pretty darn good. And no blade play when it's open. We'll call it near mint in box with a way better than factory edge. I think these knives are still available online for 84 bucks at your favorite web retailer. Uh, completed listings on eBay between 60 and $80. This one with a way better than factory edge can be yours for $70. 70 on the Case Carhartt TB101546 SS. Back pocket. Next day sharpening available. Nope, don't need it. Next up, time for a little run of Great Eastern Cutlery. Starting it off from the Northfield Unexcelled Premium Pocket Knives line, we have a number 291319, number 29 Stockyard Whittler. This one in the stunning blood, red, jigged, bone, bolsters, nickel silver, lined and pinched big old unexcelled shield it is a three spring whittler okay so the main blade coming from the large end of the 29 frame it is a gorgeous clip point long pull cut swedge north field etch pull weight six and a half perfect walk and talk First secondary implement is going to be a sheep's foot. And the other is a punch. Walk and talk and centering all gorgeous on this knife. Condition is going to be near mint to like new. <clears throat> of course, these knives are gone at retailers. Why are they gone? Because it's a GEC. Uh, completed sold listings on eBay 
for this model and this cover running between 180 and 255. The old 29 has gotten a little more popular as it gets more scarce. This one can be yours for the bargain price of 140. 140 and then 165 for me to sharpen that main clip and that secondary sheep's foot. Next day sharpening is available. That's the GEC Northfield number 29 Stockyard Whittler. Next up, from the handcrafted Tidiute cutlery line of GEC, we have a number 562118 in mustard jigged bone. That is the number 56 Dogleg Jack, and here it is. There is your mustard bone. I'm not sure what they call that shield, but it sure is attractive. You're going to have polished, smooth nickel, silver bolsters, brass liners. Inside, a single spear point blade on a cam tang because it's a 56. Satin finished, drawn swedge, nail neck. Nice cam tang walk and talk. Light action though. About oh, a five and a half pull. Centering looks to be pretty much right down the middle of that blade well. Condition on this one's going to be near mint to like new in tube. Um, I think kind of a rare blade set for a 56. Can't find a new one. I did find some sold knives just like this on eBay. Completed listings running between 150 and 225. I gotta believe that 225 is an outlier for this knife. This one can be yours, a super fine example. 135 like it is, 135, 150 with an apostrophe edge. That is in your inventory as GEC Tidute number 56, Dogleg Jack. Next up, another pattern that is sort of creeping up in value as time goes by. From the Tidiute Cutlery line, we have a number 620220 Easy Pocket Half Congress in Blood Red Jigged Bone. And here is the knife. That's just, boy, if you looked up Congress knife in the dictionary, it ought to have a picture of that. That big, proud Tidiute Shield Smooth bolsters, nickel silver variety, brass liners. Blade set is on half stops. You have a Warncliffe main. Just super nice walk and talk. About six and a half pull. And then you got a little secondary pen. And here's the neat thing about this knife, guys. It's a Congress knife. Zero blade rub. Zero evidence of rub on either blade. Yeah, condition on this one. Going to be uh, near mint to like new in tube. Can't really find any issue with it. Just a super fine example. <clears throat> Let's see. I did find one of these that sold recently on eBay for $189. They're creeping up. This one, though, can be yours for $130. $130. $145. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $140. $
So the calf roper, I believe, was originally produced as a two-bladed jack. This one, a three-blade stockman. Clip point main on cam tangs. About a six pull. Nice snappy walk and talk. Sheep's foot in the middle. A little softer pull on that one. And then a little mini spay on the back side. Very slight rub on all three blades. It's a congressing stockman, right? Nice, nice little calf roper. Super nice. Let's see. We're going to say near mint in tube. Another one, another model from Great Eastern that is creeping up in value. Uh, I found completed listings of sold knives on eBay that ran between. 192 and 250. This one can be yours. 170, like it is. 205 for me to sharpen all three blades. That's going to be in your inventory as the GEC Tidute number 66 calf roper. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. Next up, I don't believe I've ever seen this knife in my person with this cover material. From the Farm and Field Tool line from GEC, we have a number 715118 Bullnose Sodbuster in Muslin Micarta. I'm not a huge fan of Muslin Micarta in general, but on this knife, it works. Uh huh. So this is a 2018 rendition of the bullnose so it's going to be 1095 steel 3 and 13 16 inches of closed length a solid 8 pull on that working man's drop point blade the profile of the spine on that drop point is stunning just a slight hump right through here nail neck long drawn swedge beautiful satin finish It walks, it talks, it's centered up pretty doggone nicely. All steel construction, right, except for the brass pin and lanyard too, but liners are steel on these knives. <clears throat> Condition on this one, uh, pretty much like new in the tube, guys. And a super fine example. I don't think you see this cover material very often. <clears throat> I did find some completed listings on eBay. Get this. The low, 175 The high, sold price, 325 325 for a sod buster somebody paid. This one can be yours. 160 160 like it is. 180 with an Apostle Piage. Next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first six. Oh, guys, I really need you here to save me from myself. What's my favorite Great Eastern Cutlery pattern of all time? You guys know it. It's the number 78 American Jack. We have one. <laughs> yes, we do. From Northfield, the number 782217 in Sambar Stag. Oh, guys. There's the pile side. Look at that big ridge of awesome running down that thing. And then here's the, I guess, that's the mark side. That's the pile side. That's the mark side. That's the pile side. That's the mark side. That's the pile side. Oh. The mark side no longer with a shield on any stag knife from GEC. And look at the match, guys. Let me get my hand behind it so you can see better. It's just nice. Double line bolsters, plain end caps, spear and pen blade set, long pull, fingerprint. <laughs> uh. Cut swedge, Northfield etch. 
pen secondary. The best pen secondary in the world. Nice and long and usable. Pull weight. About seven and a half, I'm going to say. So on the stronger side for this spear point run. Okay. <clears throat> Walk and talk, beautiful. Centering's perfect. It's near mint to like new. Um, now, I only could find a completed listing for a 2014 clip point in stag. That knife did 425. The spears don't do as much money. There is one currently listed <clears throat> on eBay for a buy it now of 325. This one can be yours for 225. 225 like it is 250 with my edge on both blades please buy it quickly or you know what's going to happen and it's really not in the budget but i don't have a stack 78 so yeah 225 like it is 250 both blades sharpened next day sharpening available that's in your inventory as gec northfield number 78 american jack stag next up Another one of my all-time favorite GEC patterns. This one from the Northfield and Excelled family of premium pocket knives. We got a number 922219 Eureka Jack. An antique golden rod. Smooth camel bone. I want you to look at that camel bone, guys. That put the gold in goldenrod. <clears throat> Man, look at that stuff. Not the most figuring I've ever seen in camel bone, but the color. I hope this is coming through. So you got smooth end caps. You got double line bolsters. Nickel silver. Nickel silver houndstooth shield. Main spear point. Long pull cut swedge, Northfield etch. Long pull is the match striker variety. Pull weight, a solid seven. Walk and talk, amazing. Secondary blade is that little short, sharp coping blade. And one cool feature of the Eureka is how the back spring wraps to take up some of that blade well in front of the coping blade. Blade centering on this one, I'm calling it perfect by my old eyes. Conditions near meant to like new and tube. Uh, let's see, you know, this is not a rare knife, but man, are they desirable. I found one completed listing on eBay of a sold knife for $250. And then there are two currently listed for $289 each. This one can be yours. $200. $200, like it is. $225, I sharpen both blades. Next day sharpening is available. This one's in your inventory. Is GEC Northfield number 92 Eureka Jack. Next up, this is probably the rarest knife in the GEC run, <clears throat> maybe. Why? Well, first of all, because it's got a red, white, and blue stars and stripes GEC shield on the tube. Yeah, this is from the Great Eastern Cutlery line from Great Eastern Cutlery. We call them the acorn knives because they're made of stainless steel blades. It's a number 990118 Wall Street in American Elk. Look at this, guys. Acorn Shield. Triple line bolsters. Plain end caps. And two gorgeous pieces of American Elk. You got a little Coke bottle going on, but nicely matched covers. You know, the Wall Street is a lockback knife. Single Warncliffe blade, pull weight NA on this one because it's a lockback. Here's your GEC etch, practical knives. Just very slight vertical play in that lockback mechanism. Just very slight, guys. No side play. 
and the centering on this one is going to be close not perfect condition is going to be near mint to like new in tube um, I couldn't really find a comp for this knife I found one completed listing for a bone handle that worm groove bone knife and that one sold for $199 I think the elk is probably not as durable as bone but more desirable as a collector even so this one can be yours for $175 175 like it is 190 with an apostle p edge that's in your inventory as gec acorn number 99 wall street next up i don't have one of these and i kind of would like one but doggone they used to be cheaper from the titty Ute line from gec we got a number 441218 44 Magnum gun stock in OD green linen. Man, I got a, I have a Gabon Ebony Tidute 44. And I love me some linen. Look at that. Hot dog shield, smooth polished bolsters and end caps, brass liners. Pull weight on this one, seven and a half. Gorgeous clip point. Drawn swedge, nail nicks. It's really a cut swedge that looks like a drawn swedge. Because remember, guys, these were the first, or one of the very first runs of knives that Bill and the guys did on their new CNC grinders. And those grinders cut that drawn swedge. So, drawn style cut swedge. Beautiful satin finish. Beautiful satin finish. Walk and talk amazing secondary pen blade did they steal that off the 78 I got a Patty's potato peeler etch on the secondary blade on the mark side where it belongs I think anyway all stunning perfect everything uh, yeah walk talk centering everything's gorgeous near meant to like new and tube <clears throat> now I did see one of these on eBay that sold for 130 but it was kind of a turd. Uh, all the way up to 250 in OD Linen. This one can be yours. It's just a stunning example, guys. 150, 150 like it is. 175 with my edge on both blades. And next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first six. That's in your inventory as GEC Titty number 44 Magnum Gunstock. And that's it for the GECs. Shall we pause for a moment and shed a tear? Okay. Next up, <clears throat> it's not the last traditional slip joint. Pocket knife in the sale. This one is from Shred and custom maker Joe. I'm going to butcher his name. Kius, K-I-O-U-S. We have a reverse Congress covered in green jig bone with a gimp shield rat tailed and double line bolsters this is number doggone it, 24 out of 100 made etched or engraved into that bolster file worked back spring and it is an opposite end congress one spring the main blade is that beautiful drop point in stainless Damascus, file worked spine on half stops, beautiful walk and talk, about a six and a half pull, we'll say. Interesting, notice the mark side of the blade has no plunge grind. The main grinds are chisel ground, the cutting edge is V ground. Okay, and that Congress is with that little Warncliffe blade. The Damascus is gorgeous. I don't know if it's damascus steel, but it is stainless Damascus. Awesome walk and talk. Zero rub on those Damascus blades. A little bit of wear on the bolsters, and no box comes with this one. 
but just a super fine little knife. Um, between between collectible knife websites and eBay, I found these selling between two thirty and two seventy two. And by the way, it's three and three eighths inches in closed length, so kind of a smaller knife. So yeah, these are selling between two thirty and two seventy two online. This one can be yours, no box, two hundred dollars, and then two twenty five for me to sharpen both blades. That's in your inventory as the Schrade slash Joe Kius Reverse Congress. Next up, we're going to transition to the modern age with a couple Swiss Army knives. <laughs> First up, guys, is a Victorinox Ranger with a Night Eyes pocket clip that very ingeniously attaches to the eyelet that would normally house the split ring, okay? With a T, no, with a Phillips head screw. Uh -huh. And I believe it takes the toothpick slot, I think. There are just a couple nicks in that night eyes clip. So here's what's going on in the Ranger. Main spear, a secondary pen. Do -do 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 -do. What's next here? Big old nail file. Saw. Scissors. And the normal can opener, can opener, cap lifter, screwdriver set. On the back side, there is a parcel hook. It's very hard to dig out with that clip. There's an awl. There it is. A chisel, there is a corkscrew, no straight pin, but there's a hole. Oh, I'm sorry, the toothpick and the tweezers are both there, duh. So yeah, other than a little bit of carry wear on the covers, every, all the tools are pretty much pristine. <clears throat> so we'll call it excellent to near mint. Now guys, this clip's 25 bucks if you buy a new one. So I think these knives are selling, you know, in the $35 range without that night eyes clip used in similar condition. With this clip, this knife can be yours for 50 bucks and then 75 for me to sharpen the main spear and the pen blade. Next day sharpening available if you're one of the first six. That's the Victornax Ranger with clip. <clears throat> Next up, we got the classic of classics in sort of larger Swiss Army knives. It's the Champion, okay? The Champion, which has you know, spawned a host of children, the various champs, right? So here's the main spear. Here's the secondary pen. Here's the big old nail file. Here is the fish scaling and a hook removal tool. Here are the scissors. Here is a Phillips. Here is a magnifying glass, and man, do they work. Okay, and that one's nice and clear. And then your normal screwdriver can opener, screwdriver cap lifter. Over here on the back side, we have an awl. We have a parcel hook. We have another screwdriver. And, whoops. I'm missing one. There it is. There's your chisel. And the corkscrew. No straight pin, but there is a hole. Okay. Uh, other than a little bit of cover wear, all the tools seem to be squared away. And this one can be yours for 40 bucks. $40 like it is. 65 I sharpen the main spear and the secondary pen. And next day, next day sharpening is available. If it's one of the first six knives purchased to be sharpened tonight, that is the Victorinox Champion. Next up, here is a really cool knife. Back when Browning was a pocket knife company, I'm not sure they make any pocket knives or have any made anymore. Back in the late 20th century, they were making some really sweet pocket knives. I used to have one, not this model. 
and they were made by Moki in Japan by Moki in Japan if you're a Spyderco collector you've owned Moki knives okay if you're an Elmar collector you've owned Moki knives this is a Browning carbon fiber scales titanium liners including the liner lock which gives you a little bit of that titanium stick just to let you know it's locked Emerson style clip tip down right hand only and then an ATS 34 blade Tonto combo edge with a screwed on thumb plate and guys just super sweet action on this knife I think it's riding on phosphor bronze zero blade plays unbelievable action blade centering is going to favor the lock side ever so slightly the handle length is four and three eighths the blade length is three and thirteen sixteenths this was called the piranha notice the word titanium for the liners ATS 34 is your blade steel made in Japan bead blasted flat satin everywhere else Pretty cool. Very cool. Um, great piece of knife history for those of you who are interested in such things. Now, I could only find one cop for this knife that actually sold. It was on eBay. It was a G10 scaled version of this knife that sold for $135. This has got the carbon fiber scales. Got to be worth more. But you can buy this one for 120, 120 near mint, no box, 145 with an Apostle P edge on that Tonto blade. That's the Browning Piranha CF Tonto. Next up, okay, we got twins here, and they're going to be differentiated in your inventory list by the clip. Okay, first, the Benchmade 522 Presidio Ultra. And it's going to say split arrow in the description because we have a parkerized split arrow clip. So the 522 Presidio Ultra <clears throat> was different than the what 520 that had the aluminum scales. This has an FRN product. I'll tell you, I think it's the same stuff that they're now calling the CF Elite, right? It's a very carbon-rich, rigid FRN, molded to look like the milled texture in the 520 aluminum handle knife. So axis lock, old school, hollow ground blade, and faux faux to see, baby. The original super steel, three and seven sixteenths inches of blade, black thumb studs. Handle is four and three eighths. Is that right? Uh, four and thirteen sixteenths. Parkerized steel liners. Uh -huh. Knife is near mint, no box. Beautiful action, beautiful centering. And does it lock up like an axis lock? Of course it does, it's perfect. So we'll say near mint, no box. Long discontinued, not a stock. Uh, 85 bucks like it is guys 105 with an apostle p edge and that's in your inventory as bench made 522 presidio ultra split arrow split arrow next day sharpening available next up i bet you know what it is it is another bench made 522 presidio ultra Four and thirteen sixteenths inches a handle in a very carbon rich FRN molded with lots of very usable texture to emulate the aluminum handle on the old 520 Presidio, but much lighter, but still super strong. Got parkerized steel liners. This is wearing a painted Emerson style clip, <clears throat> so it's going to be in your inventory as. Benchmade 522 Presidio Ultra Emerson, okay. Blade, three and seven sixteenths inches of old school Mel Pardue 440C. 
Zero blade play. Sweet action. Whoops. And dead nuts blade centering. How about that? Discontinued out of stock knife. This one can be yours for 85 bucks, like it is 105 with an Apostle P edge. Near mint, no box. This will be in your inventory as Benchmade 522 Presidio Ultra Emerson because it has an Emerson style clip, not to be confused with the split arrow on the other one. Okay. Next up from Kershaw. Made in the USA. And this is a Sprint Run exclusive to USA Made Blade. Because USA Made Blade loves to do their custom anno. And they've done it in a stunning bright red on this knife. Blackened subframe lock. Black clip. Blade is a gorgeous hunk of stonewashed M. 390. Uh huh. Three and a quarter inches of blade, four and three quarters inches of handle. That clip goes four ways, and it is a deep carry, nice low profile clip. Zero blade play. There's your lock engagement. Of course, it's rock solid. There's your blade centering. It's extremely close, but not quite perfect. Speed safe spring assisted action is dead on the money. It's near mint in box and unobtainium. Uh, they're out of stock new. I couldn't find a used one that's sold. What do you think of that? Unobtainium. Your price? $125. $125 like it is. $150 with an Apostle P edge. Near mint in box. That's the Kershaw 1870 RDSW knockout. Next up, from Hogue Knives, and there is a Hogue sticker inside the box. We got the model 24277 DECA with Able Lock. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, it says on the box G10 Dark Earth. I kind of wonder if it's got the right box, because... Well, I thought they used to call that G-Mascus or something, but it's pretty cool. There's blacks, there's grays, there's browns. So the Able Lock from Hogue is their interpretation of the patent-expired Benchmade Axis Lock. Obviously, Hogue has done some Doug Ritter knives with this lock mechanism, and they're doing it right. Don't think I've seen a bad one yet. I haven't seen a DECA, um, but a super light little knife, guys. Look at that blade stock. That's got to be 330 seconds, and the blade steel is CPM 20 CV. Uh, this is like a bug out fighter, guys. It really is. Three and a quarter inches of blade, four and five sixteenths inches of handle. Got a nice skinny clip. It is going to be reversible left or right tip up with a fill tab on the side you're not using. Nice little milled texture in that G10. Even though that blade's spinning, it'll still flick right open and flick right closed. Zero blade play. Hard to see, but the centering is down the middle. Condition on this one's going to be near mint in box. There is a little tiny mark on the edge of the clip, if you can see it. Okay. Uh, let's see. These knives are selling new for $148 web pricing. This one can be yours. 125. I'm not sure I found that handle material by the way online. But. So 125 like it is. 150 with an Apostle P edge. That is the Hogue 24277 Deca Able Lock. Next up from Giant Mouse Knives, Jesper Voxness and Jens Anso, we have. The Giant Mouse Ace Iona. Now, just a moment of frankness, like, like I, like that's rare for me. 
I kind of like most Giant Mouse stuff, but frankly, at like 50% more than the same knife the same Italian maker would sell if they had their name on it, I'm not into them. But this Iona, oh my, i got to turn this on. It's still Italian made. It still has an M390 blade. It's still cool. Just a great little knife, and they don't break the bank. So yeah, two and seven eighths inches of M390, beautifully stone washed. I think we're on phosphor bronze. We are, but man, the the opening action is amazing. The detent's perfect. Just a little stainless steel liner lock with the Anso pattern. Get this molded into the FRN handle. I. You know, I thought it was G10 until I looked really close. This is molded, and this is really cool. It looks like it has a backspacer, but I believe it's integral to this side. And then this side screws on top. I do not believe that's G10, guys. But uh, it's good stuff. Deep carry clip, reversible left or right tip up. There's your lock engagement. It's rock solid. Centers up nicely. What a great little user. Well, I just keep that. That's nice. Um, near mint in box. Web pricing on these is 125. I don't think I found any gray ones in stock anywhere. They make them in several colors. This one can be yours for 80 bucks. Shipped priority mail. 105 with my edge on it. That is the giant mouse Ace Iona. That's probably the buy of the week right there. Next up, <clears throat> did I tell you yesterday in the teaser video that I had a really cool knife from Rake? Yeah, that I had to learn how to say from a Canadian. So it's an English sounding word from a Chinese company that the American had to be taught to pronounce by the Canadian, from, by Kevin Cleary. So that's not Rake, there's another Rake. This is Rake knife, Rake knife, Rake. The model number is interesting. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is the Tule, T-U-L-A-Y, from Rake. Look at that, guys. A 5-inch handle, black and red G10. I think that inlay there is titanium, I think. And then you got blue anodized, probably aluminum pivot collars. Then a little bit of carbon fiber inlaid in the G10. Reversible deep carry clip with a fill tab. And it looks like that screws in from the clip side because there's no fastener shown. How cool is that? And then, ball bearing flipper. Uh -huh. Pretty cool blade. 154cm, bead blasted. Liner lock works perfectly. Rock solid. Centering, beautiful. Flipping action. Great. Blade length on the Tule is 3 and 11 sixteenths, so almost 3 and 3 quarters inches long. Cool knife. Uh, near mint to like new in box. Perfect example. Web pricing on these, buy them brand new, 150 This one can be yours for 125 shipped priority mail. And 145 if you'd like it with an Apostle P Edge. That's the Rake Tule. Next up. Boy, here's a darling of the knife community the last few years, if I can pick up the box. <clears throat> From Mass Drop and custom knife maker TJ Schwartz, we have the USA made Mass Drop Perpetua in gray G10 with a stolen lock mechanism from Benchmade. That is the Access lock. I don't know what TJ calls it, but it's an access lock. You've got an unassuming basic pocket clip that's going to be tip up reversible left or right. The blade is a hollow ground, saber ground utility blade in the steel Nitro V. Nitro V. So, what is Nitro V? It is AEBL, which is like Sandvik 12C27, 
with a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of vanadium added, but it gives it a little bit better edge holding. Okay. Uh, blade length three and three sixteenths, handle four and seven sixteenths. Great knife in the hand. A little bit blocky in, in its design, but works great. Super silky smooth action on this one. And zero blade play. And centering's beautiful. <clears throat> Condition. Near mint to like new. I really couldn't find a mark on it. This knife is currently dropping in its latest form on drop.com for 90 bucks. This one can be yours for 75 And then 95 if you'd like it with an Apostle P Edge. That's the Mass Drop Schwartz Perpetua. Next up, from Cold Steel, we have an AD-15. Andrew Demko designed with the Scorpion Lock. Green milled G10 aluminum Scorpion Lock Bar. Blade steel is going to be S35VN, beautiful drop point with great jumping, a beautiful swedge. Action's perfect. Centering's perfect. Let's see, it's a Demco lock. Does it lock up? Of course it does. Condition on this one's going to be near mint in the box. I found a little scratch. Where is it? Where's my scratch? Right above my thumb on the pocket clip. It goes right straight across. Easy to polish out if you wanted to. But definitely near mint in box. Web pricing on this knife at your favorite retailer right now is about $215. This one can be yours. $140. $140. Like it is. $160 with an Apostle P Edge. That's the Cold Steel AD-15. Next up. Oh, golly! Oh, man. I've always wanted one of these. <laughs> mm. Oh, here it is, guys. It is a real beast from ZT. And the labels are kind of odd. I'm not sure the retailer on this knife. So it's a ZT0393SW Sprint Run. Sprint run. Uh-huh. So this is based on the Hinderer Eclipse and the ZT0392. The 393 designed to be slimmer, lighter, less expensive. <clears throat> we have milled black G10 tuxedo scales. Right? A natural stonewashed titanium frame. Natural. Okay, it's not bead blasted and anodized in a color. And then you got a beautiful stonewashed S35 VN blade. Blade length is three and five eighths. Handle is four and three quarters. Okay, you got a steel inserted frame lock that's kind of protected from death lock by that overlaid scale. Rock solid lockup, ball bearing flipper. Harpoon, what would we call that? Harpoon Clanto, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, now, this is supposed to come with a black clip, and it's, the, the clip is painted on this knife. Okay, and somebody has very lovingly satined that clip, leaving the black paint in the grooves, which looks really cool. Um, so understand it's clip modded so it's near mint in box everything's beautiful on it guys clip mod noted <clears throat> they must be pretty rare because I think I found a couple of sold listings on these knives but they were Australian sellers on eBay uh they were over 300, and there's one currently listed for a buy it now of 361. Yeah, you heard that right. Uh, I don't think they're worth that much, even though they are a Sprint limited edition. 
This can be yours for 225, like it is 225, then 245 with an Apostle Piage. That's the ZT0393 SW. Next up, from the Benchmade Knife Company, Oregon City, Oregon, we got a black class knife. It's the 4600 DLC Phaeton. It is an out the front automatic with a black hard anodized aluminum handle, aluminium, if you're from over there in merry old England. We got a Parkerized Deep Carry Butterfly Pocket Clip, and we got, oh, 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 we got us a nice skinny DLC coated clip point blade in S30V. Now this knife has been user sharpened. It's pretty good. Okay. Button effort on the Phaeton. Stout. Not uh, not stout like a five-year-old Ultratech, but close. You're not going to watch a movie for two hours and flick this thing open and closed a hundred times. Okay. Your thumb will be wore out. Beautifully reliable, though. Blade length on the Phaeton is 3 and 7 sixteenths, and handles 4 and 5 eighths. The clip is reversible, left or right. We will call this one near mint in box. Map pricing on these knives brand new is $340. This one can be yours for $275. $275 like it is, $295 with an Apostle P Edge. Next day sharpening is available if it's one for six. Next up, I teased you yesterday. I did. From Benchmade, Black Class, Oregon City, Oregon. Molly attachment strap inside the box of the 3300 BK Infidel. Comes in a black ballistic nylon Molly compatible sheet that appears to have really never been carried. As does the knife. Mm. Why am I a Benchmade collector and don't own one of these? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. D2. D2 blade. Are those Cerakoted in the current models? I don't know. I just love the fuller. Why do I love that fuller? I don't know. There, maybe it's something about the design. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Basically like new in the box except for a little wear in the coating from doing that. Okay. Oh, guys. Mm. Yep. Brand new. You can buy one of these for three, I'm sorry, for 433 and they're out of stock at all websites. Couldn't find one in stock. 433 web pricing. This one can be yours. 350. 350 like it is. I don't like to sharpen double-edged dagger blades because I think it's silly. They're made for sticking people and fondling. So don't ask me to sharpen it. Doesn't need it. Your price. 350 on the Infidel. Next up. Time to head down to Colorado by way of Seki City. We have a Spider Co. It's a Delica pack of wood. And guys, you got ugly pack of wood, you got okay looking pack of wood, and then you got this. That is the most stunning set of pack of wood scales I've ever seen on a Knife Center dealer exclusive. Look at that, would ya? Wow. So it's a Delica FFG HAP40 tool steel clad in SUS410. You guys all know the knife. Lock, it, lock up is rock solid. Action is silky smooth. Centering is right down the middle. Hafting is perfect, of course. You know how they do it. Sicky city. Classic of classics and a great blade steel with a gorgeous set of pack of wood scales. 
Uh, your price on this one, you can't buy a new one. When they were in stock, they were 156. This one can be yours, 125 like it is, 150 with an Apostle Piage. That's in your inventory is Spyderco Delica FFG Pekka Hep 40. Next up, mm -hmm. I love Hep 40, but what do I love more? You got, what do I love more? You guys know. Mm -hmm. CPM M4. That's exactly what we got. Spider Co. Bradley 2. Bradley 2 is not wearing its original scales, but they are going to be in the box. The knife is wearing some deep maroon or burgundy canvas micarta scales. Look kind of cool, don't they? Uh huh. Clip is unmolested, as is the blade. It does seem to be developing a little gray haze, just slightly gray haze, which is exactly how you want M4 to patina. Uh -huh. Hollow ground, skinny, slicey, awesome. There's your lock engagement. Action is silky smooth, centering is down the middle. Yep, that's just what you want. Condition is going to be near mint in box. It is discontinued. It is out of stock. It has custom scales. It can be yours for 165. 165 like it is. 190 with an Apostle P edge. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. That's the Spider Co. Gale Bradley 2. Cust scales. Next up, a nudden from Spider Co. Golden Colorado USA Earth by way of Golden Colorado USA Earth. It's a native five orange BLK. I think this is a cutlery shop exclusive, and it is. It's a native five lightweight with orange FRN scales and a DLC coated blade of S90V. Uh -huh. Looks like we got a parkerized clip. Doesn't that clip finish and blade finish go together perfectly? Rock solid lockup on the bushing. Centering beautiful. Condition is going to be near mint in box. Um, I couldn't find. I couldn't find a used knife sold. I don't think. I, I don't know. I can't remember. But this has got to be a buy. 120 like it is 120 and then if you like my edge on it 145 on the spider Co. native 5lw and then in parentheses or comma s90v next up another one from spider Co. but we're spreading it around this one from seki no from taichung taiwan it's a spider Co. gail bradley advocate and it is a CQI version with the bigger bearings and the bigger backing washers. Love this knife. Own this knife. Probably never sell this knife. Gorgeous orange peel titanium handle with polished spine or polished edges all the way around. Stonewash polished clip. Perfect detent. Perfect flipping action. Centering is down the middle. Uh, yeah, it's down the middle. M4 blade. You guys know the knife. It's been carried, but it hasn't cut much. And the reason it's going to be near mint instead of like new is in that polished, the polished edges of the handle scales, you can see some gripping wear. Okay, that's it. And they all show that relatively quickly. I'm very anal, so I keep polishing mine. Uh, your price on this one, discontinued, out of stock everywhere. 170 like it is. 195 with an Apostle P edge. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. Next up in the last knife in the sale, I'm going to trick you. It is not a custom knife factory knife. Guys, this is a weird one. My research tells me that Buck's Custom Shop made 64 of these. It is a 
Loxa style build out. It is not a Loxa. Loxa would have a thumb stud. But it's other than that really close to a Loxa. So you got satin finished nickel silver bolsters, textured G10 scales, the Buck Anvil logo, and then you've got a very interesting pocket clip that is reversible left to right. The blade steel on these is 440C. They made 64 of them, I think. And the mechanism's great. There's a there's no play at all. Really smooth action. Very nicely centered. I think I found a little rub in the satin finish of the bolster. Other than that, it's like new. So we'll call it near mint no box. They were 225 when they were new. Where I can't remember, but this one can be yours for 150 bucks. 150 like it is, 170 with my edge on it. Next day sharpening available. And that's in your inventory as Buck 110 SPED for special edition. Okay. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another weekly knife sale on the Apostle P channel. Thank you for hanging out with me, and I appreciate your patronage as always. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. Have at her, boys.